Ouch! Ah, oh, there's hardly a person who's never been stung by a bee. It's definitely not a pleasant feeling. But bees aren't normally angry creatures. You probably just scared the little guy. These insects are super important for pollination. Their existence is one of the main reasons why our plants keep growing. Bees only sting when they feel threatened. If you get stung, it might mean you've come too close to them. Or, more importantly, that you've come too close to their hive. Each hive can hold between 50,000 to 80,000 honeybees. Just like us humans, bees do everything to protect their home. But instead of alarms and complicated security systems, they use their stingers to ward off enemies. When honeybees sting, they release something called a pheromone. Pheromones are chemical substances that affect the behavior of animals of the same species. If one bee charges at you, the pheromones are likely to stir up all nearby bees, and they will readily join in. That's one meeting you'll definitely want to avoid. Here's a fun fact. It's only female bees that can sting. Larger male drone bees don't even have stingers. This is because the stinger is basically a modified egg-laying device. Queen bees also have stingers. These bees are bigger than the average worker. The queen has an average size of just under one inch. It's about twice the size of your regular worker bee. Because of its large size, many people think that the queen bee's sting hurts the most. So let's dive into it. First of all, queen bees rarely sting because of their job in the hive. The queen is the most important bee in the colony, as it's the only female that can reproduce. The queen has two main jobs in the hive. Number one, she produces chemical scents that help unify the rest of the bees so they can work together. Number two, she lays a lot of eggs, up to 2,000 a day. The queen is surrounded by worker bees who meet her every need at all times. They give her food. The attendant workers also collect and then distribute the queen's pheromones, which stops the workers from finding a new queen. But despite being the head of the hive and being much bigger than other bees, the queen's sting is actually the least painful. This is because regular bees have barbed stingers. This means that when they attack, the stinger gets stuck in your skin, making it really difficult to remove. The stinger also contains nasty venom that's packed with proteins. That's what causes the pain and affects your immune system and skin cells. The stinger continues to pump venom into your body for more than 10 minutes or until it gets removed. But unlike workers, queen bees leave the hive very rarely. Their main job is to lay eggs, and it's down to the rest of the colony to protect the hive and the queen. That's why worker bees are the ones with the most powerful sting. This is how they can ward off potential dangers. The only reason the queen would really need to defend herself is against rival queens. Because of this, the queen has no need to develop a nasty stinger. Hers is instead a lot smoother. This means that the barbs don't get stuck in your skin, which can be mega uncomfortable. While this might sound good, it does come with a bit of bad news. Because of the smoothness of its stinger, the queen can jab you multiple times. The stinger is attached to the bee's digestive tract, nerves, and muscles, all of which are essential for the bee to function normally. When workers sting, they're unable to pull their stinger out because of the barbs. And when they try to get free, it doesn't end well for them. But the queen stinger doesn't get stuck. That's why the bee doesn't feel any negative consequences. And still, she'll basically only sting you if she doesn't have one of her bodyguards nearby, which is highly unlikely. So what's the worst place to be stung by a bee? A man called Michael Smith decided to find out. He got stung on 25 different body parts and rated each prick on a pain scale between 1 and 10. He found out that the most tender area was the nostrils, scoring a 9 out of 10, followed by the upper lip, which he estimated as an 8.7. The three least painful locations were the skull, middle toe tip, and upper arm. All of these scored a 2.3. But moving back to the queen, how does a regular bee gain this title? The queen bee rarely needs replacing, as she can live for a whopping five years. At the same time, a worker bee born in the summer usually only survives for about six weeks. But if the queen passes away or moves to another hive, the colony needs to replace her. Doing this requires something called royal jelly, 
which nurse bees produce in their heads. They feed it to newly hatched honeybee larvae. It's basically a superfood that contains loads of useful stuff, including vitamin B, proteins, hormones, and sugars. After feeding baby bees for three days, workers select just a few larvae and continue giving them the royal jelly. The others will have a less nutritional diet. The royal jelly triggers new phases of development for these growing bees. And one of the most important is growing special organs they need to lay eggs. But people still don't fully understand how this process works. Some scientists say that it's not the royal jelly itself that causes a bee to turn into a queen. They think it's the exclusion of other natural plant-based chemicals from the queen's diet. But even though we aren't 100% sure how these special bees appear, we do know why there's just one queen in the end. When the first queen emerges, she searches for the other bees who've been fed the same royal jelly. And then she wipes out the competition. If several queens emerge at the same time, it's time to grab your popcorn. They'll hunger games it out in a dramatic fight until only one remains. And that's how bees get their queen. Other bees in the hive also have important jobs. These include foraging for food, tending to young larvae, and building a honeycomb. Drones, or male bees, have one singular job. They mate with the queen. And when they're not trying to mate, they eat from honey reserves and do pretty much nothing. Female bees, or worker bees, do everything else. They keep the hive clean, take care of larvae, tend to the queen, store honey, build cells, forage, guard the nest, pollinate, and even feed male bees. Each bee knows exactly what job to do. That's because their specific hormones activate parts of their genetic makeup that tell them what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. Bees have four job phases in their lifetime. Phase one starts about three weeks after they get born. That's when they get to work cleaning the cells from which they've emerged. Three days later, they enter phase two. In this phase, they're in charge of feeding other bees. This lasts for about a week. Then they enter phase three. They move further away from the hive center and become handy helpers. They build the honeycomb and guard the hive's entrance. This period also lasts for around a week. After that, they enter the fourth and final phase, the foraging stage. It's definitely the most dangerous part of our stripy friends' lives. This is where they leave the nest, look for pollen, bring it home, and feed the colony. They also leave a stinky footprint on the flowers they touch when collecting pollen. This way, they can figure out if their bee relatives have been here or if it's been a stranger. Sometimes they discover their own footprints. <laughs> Unbelievable! This phase doesn't last very long though, only around 10 days, as it makes bees super tired. After such a short life, where they work non-stop, worker bees then leave the hive to never return. At the same time, if a worker passes away inside the hive, special undertaker bees carry this bee out. But while bees' lives may be short, this pattern seems to be working out quite well for the species. After all, they've been around for over a whopping 130 million years and counting. Doink! What was that on your arm? A bee. Great. Not exactly a pleasant feeling. Painful, itchy, annoying, scary. We've all been there before. So, that happens because the bee jabs its barbed stinger into your skin and releases some venom. The venom contains proteins that cause pain and can affect your immune system and skin cells. But that's nothing compared to what the bee has to go through. Poor little thing. You'll be fine after a few hours, but the bee? Not so much. Honeybees don't usually sting people unless they feel threatened or if you accidentally step on them. The problem is that after stinging you, the bee can't pull its barbed stinger out of your skin. The only way to get free is to leave the stinger behind. The stinger though, not just a sweet defense mechanism, it also contains part of the bee's digestive tract, nerves, and muscles that are, unfortunately, essential for the bee to function normally. So, yep, after losing all that, this tiny creature doesn't survive. Yikes. Poor little bee. Apart from that, they're such cool animals. They have five eyes, two pairs of wings, and six legs. Bees have excellent survival instincts, and they've been around for a really long time. 130 million years and counting. Who knows what ancient species they've stung? Most bees in the hive are called worker bees, and the big cheese is called the queen. She lays around 2,000 eggs per day. 
Sound like a lot? Well, the average hive contains 50,000 bees, and they disappear after just one sting. I guess going through a painful and itchy experience doesn't actually sound that bad when you only have one bee on your arm. Imagine if you had the whole hive. It may seem like bees just aimlessly fly around or use their vision to decide where they go. But these cool insects are pretty organized and rely on a super complex transport system. Imagine planning a cross-country road trip, only this time there are no roads. I can't even make it to the gym without my GPS, or if I stop at a burger joint on the way there. But not bees, they're way cooler than us. They use bee lines. Well, I call them that. They're basically a series of insect pathways bees tend to follow through human towns or the countryside. These pathways link every existing wildlife area together. It's like a bee railway system. My favorite bee is the buff-tailed bumblebee. It has an oval-shaped body covered in dense hair and a brain the size of a poppy seed. Considering how small it is, that's really impressive. How smart are they? Scientists made an experiment where they trained a bunch of them to play bee soccer. They even learned how to score a goal in return for a sweet sugary treat. Unbelievable! These same bees have another amazing ability. They use their smelly footprints to distinguish between the scents of strangers, their own bee relatives. They can even recognize their own scent. Bumblebees, we know your dirty little secret. You have smelly feet. And then, there's the queen bee. She's unique in her colony, and her main task? Laying eggs. People often assume the queen is there to tell the other bees exactly what to do. Yeah, not really. She does have a certain influence. But even without her, the hive actually functions pretty well. Each bee has a job and knows its daily functions and tasks because of its instincts and the chemical signals it senses and uses. So, I guess no one needs to tell them how to behave. Those chemical signals are their way of communicating. Oh, and they know how to shake it. They wiggle their bodies at specific angles for a certain amount of time. That's how they send messages to each other. If something happens to the queen bee and she doesn't survive, worker bees create a new one. Yep, they don't find one, but sort of raise a new one. They choose a young larva and feed the future, Her Majesty, a special food called royal jelly. That lucky larva can now grow into the new queen. Bees are fast. They can beat their wings almost 200 times a second. Those eight push-ups I can do in a minute, not sounding so impressive. Each bee produces around one teaspoon of honey in its lifetime. To produce one pound of honey, bees have to fly the equivalent of one whole time around the globe. These hardworking animals make around 100 million trips to about 200 million flowers to collect enough nectar for that pound of honey. Honeybees sleep five to eight hours a day, and just like us, they rest at night. Their brains are pretty active when they're resting. Some scientists think they may be dreaming, also just like us. When winter rolls around, a lot of insects replace their body water with a special chemical called glycerol. It's a type of natural antifreeze that helps them stay alive in low temperatures. Bees, though, they just huddle together in the hive to stay toasty warm. Now, it's obvious who can win a fight between a bee and a giant hornet. It's like a battle between a kitten and a saber-toothed tiger. And an army of bees against an army of hornets is like hundreds of kittens against hundreds of lions. It seems the hornets will win because one hornet can destroy more than 1,000 bees in less than an hour and a half. But if this battle happens in real life, it will be more complicated, dramatic, and unexpected than you can imagine. A group of bees works all day. They pollinate plants and fruits and collect nectar from flowers. They work hard and return home to the hive at the end of the day. They don't notice an imposter flying among them, a giant hornet. It's bigger than one bee, but has the same yellow-black color. No one pays any attention to it. The imposter enters the bee house without an invitation and makes a crackling sound. That's how its jaws snap. Hungry and angry, it begins the feast. In a matter of seconds, the hornet puts the hive into chaos. The hornet has a sting with toxic venom, but it can go without it here. For bees, the monster uses its sharp jaws. The hive citizens attack the enemy, but it doesn't feel a thing. The situation is getting worse because bees can't live after using their sting. They sacrifice their lives to protect their home, to protect the queen. Unfortunately, all their attempts are in vain. After quenching its thirst, the hornet flies away to find new prey. Only one bee manages to survive. It escapes from the hive to warn the others. The bee visits every hive in the valley and reports the powerful enemy. All bees start preparing to attack. They're raising an army. Unfortunately, this is not enough. The giant hornet visits a new hive, but this time, bees are ready. They attack the enemy from all sides. For a moment, it seems bee stings are working. 
The hornet is weakening, its activity is falling. The hope of victory inspires bees with confidence, but not for long. At this moment, 10 other hornets fly into the hive. The first hornet marked the hive with a unique pheromone before the battle. This smell attracted its friends, and now the bees have no chance. In the wild, hornets leave the trace so others can find the tagged location. In a few minutes, 11 hornets destroy the hive of 25,000 bees. Recently, this sunny land was blooming thanks to bees. Now it has turned into a lifeless valley. Giant hornets don't want to spend time searching for hives, so they divide into groups and fly to different sides of the valley. They mark bee houses with the pheromone and start a large-scale cleanup. Their hunger and thirst for destruction are insatiable. Yeah, bees now know their enemy and notice it as soon as a hornet appears in the air, but it doesn't help. In each battle, they use a lot of strategies to fight it. Once bees tried to attack a hornet hive, but it was a pointless mission. No one pollinates flowers anymore. No one makes honey. Bees live in fear and are afraid to fly out of their hives. In this dark hour, when almost no hopes left, a slight chance of victory appears. A species of Japanese bees learned to defeat the enemy. The news spread all over the hives. The strategy seems to be working. They've managed to fight off several giant hornets. The fear goes away, and the bees are ready to fight again. In the real world, these bees learn to fight giant hornets. But other species can't do that. So bees are waiting for the enemy. They all know what to do. Finally, a giant hornet appears. Hundreds of bees attack it and wrap it with their bodies from all sides. They completely cover the hornet and start to tremble. The simultaneous vibration of all the bees heats up the enemy. The temperature is getting higher. The hornet can't get out. Bees seem to burn it with the energy of their bodies. A few minutes later, the giant hornet falls. Bees throw it out of the hive. Now they are confident of their victory. Another hornet arrives. Tired bees attack it and start to vibrate again. The next monster is coming, and another one. 10, 20, 100 hornets arrive. Bees don't have so many resources and energy. The chances to win are zero again. To win once and for all, the bees must unite. All the hives, hundreds of millions of bees. A huge, lifeless meadow is the location for the final battle. All the bees of the valley flock here. They are ready for the last fight. Silence ensues. Then, the air begins to vibrate. You can hear the buzzing of hornets from afar. They have increased their population hundreds of times because none of the animals can resist them. The defeat of bees is inevitable. But no one is going to back down. Two swarms collide with each other. This is not a battle. This is destruction. Hundreds of thousands of bees, but zero hornets, fall to the ground in a few minutes. A whole species of insects are disappearing from the planet. But what is it? The field plugs into a strange fog. Bees and hornets don't see each other. Then, through the white veil, they appear. Silhouettes of giant creatures. They come into the middle of the action. Thousands of hornets attack them, but it's all pointless. Bees quickly fall down and lose consciousness. The hornets pass out too. Some are trying to fly away, but the fog doesn't let them. All insects fall asleep. Someone used gas to stop this fight. And this someone is the bee's main ally. A human has come into the game. In thick protective suits, people picked up euthanized hornets from the ground. They put them in one basket and the bees in another. The collection of insects lasts for several hours. Then the bees wake up in their hives unharmed. Hornets wake up in special containers. They're trapped, and now they can't hurt anyone. People are destroying hornets' nests all over the world. They won't allow them to multiply. Bees are responsible for the cycle of life in nature. They help many plants to reproduce, thanks to pollination. Bees serve as berries and fruits we eat. They take care of flowers that cows and other livestock feed on. Thanks to bees, we grow a lot of cotton. If the hornets destroy them, there will be a shortage of clothes made of this material. T-shirts, jeans, jackets, all this will be more expensive and then will disappear from the markets. 
Many products will lose their rich taste and useful properties. Animals and people won't get enough vitamins. Cows won't produce milk. There will be no cheese, sour cream, butter, and other food. You won't be able to order a juicy burger at the restaurant. Eggplants, hot peppers, kiwi, blueberries, cranberries, and much more will disappear from the counter. Whole species of animals and plants will stop existing. This will lead to other crises, not only in agriculture, but also in the global economy. Meanwhile, the number of hornets will be growing. There are almost no animals in the world to control them. If people don't do anything, everyone will have to wear thick protective suits to walk outside. Hornets will get into houses and cars, attack people and pets. One giant hornet can cause a lot of trouble. Its sting is one of the most dangerous and painful among all other insects. It's like a red-hot needle. When a hornet sticks it into an opponent, it injects the poison into the skin. This toxin dilates the walls of blood vessels. The area around the bite turns red. This can last for several hours or even days. The hornet is an aggressive creature. It can sting several times. Imagine what a group of these insects can do. To escape, you need to hide in bushes with dense foliage or jump into the water. After the hornets fly away, urgently contact the hospital. Hornets can make people's lives worse. It's important to fight them. Unfortunately, bees can't do this. They're absolutely defenseless. Humanity is aware of this danger and does everything to control the hornet's population. That's why giant hornets have no chances in this fight. Now, every bee returns to its usual way of life. Pollination, nectar extraction, honey production in hives. The valley is blooming again. Bees can sleep peacefully. People monitor the situation and watch for giant hornets. If one enemy appears, it means there's a nest somewhere. Special services track down the insects and find nests under old trees and in pits.